Welcome to Lesson 5D, Fano and Rayleigh Curves for Normal Shocks. In this lesson, we'll discuss both the Fano and Rayleigh equations and their relationship to normal shocks. We'll plot these curves on Mollier diagrams, and then we'll combine the two equations to get an equation for M2 across a shock. And I'll do an example problem. First, we'll talk about the Fano equation, which we derived in the previous lesson. It's this equation for pressure ratio. We also derived a temperature ratio, but neither of these is useful unless we know M2. So this is what we'll look at in this lesson. First, I'll talk about the Fano curve, which some textbooks call the Fano line, but I prefer the word curve since it's not a line. This Fano curve is very interesting in itself. We typically plot it as a Mollier diagram with specific enthalpy as a function of specific entropy. The Fano curve looks something like this. The point to the far right is the sonic point where Mach number is 1. The upper branch is the subsonic branch, and the lower branch is the supersonic branch. It's derived from this Fano equation, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But first I want to give a formal definition. The Fano curve represents the locus of all possible states that have the same mass flow rate per unit area and the same specific enthalpy. This is the definition of the Fano curve. I give some comments here. The Fano equation satisfies mass and energy conservation, but not necessarily the linear momentum equation. If we go back and look at our equations, we used mass and energy to generate the Fano equation. We did not use the momentum equation. That's why we say that this Fano equation satisfies mass and energy, but not necessarily linear momentum. We also see that the maximum entropy point on the Fano curve occurs when the Mach number is 1, this sonic point. Let's think about this curve qualitatively for a shock. Start at some arbitrary point here, point 1, on the supersonic branch, since a shock can go only from supersonic to subsonic. Point 2 will be somewhere on this subsonic branch. In other words, the shock jumps from point 1 to point 2 on the Fano curve. But we don't know where this point 2 is at this point. Only by satisfying the linear momentum equation can we determine this point. From point 1, we can also move along this curve all the way to sonic and then subsonic or vice versa while still satisfying mass and energy. And I just realized that this should say total enthalpy, not just enthalpy. How do we plot the Fano curve? Well, I always leave this as a homework assignment for my students. So I'll just give an outline here, but you'll have to fill in a little bit of the algebra. We start at point 1, where we know m1, t1, and s1. Assume this is given, where we have s1 here and h1 here. And of course, if we know h1, we know t1. And by the way, you can plot temperature versus specific entropy as well. And the curve will have the same shape, since h is just cpt. So let's let this be our starting point. You can use whatever software you want, but I did my plot in Excel. For this given starting point, I created columns of M2, P2 over P1 from our Fano equation, T2 over T1, from which we easily get T2, T2 equal T2 over T1 times T1, H2 is just CPT2, and S2, where we use one of the TDS equations, whichever one works out for you. Do we use your equation 12 to get T2 over T1? No, Arnold, that doesn't work, because equation 12 is across a shock. But the Fano curve is more general. Not all the points on the Fano curve are across a shock. Then how do we get T2 over T1? Well, this is the part I'm leaving for homework. Be careful here. T2 over T1 is not equation 12, which applies only across a shock. T2 over T1 is not isentropic either, since S changes along the Fano curve. So what do you do? Use the ideal gas equation. Use the equation for speed of sound, 
and again, as I like to say, manipulate. If you do this correctly, you get T2 over T1 as a function of pressure ratio and the ratio of M2 to M1. Keeping in mind that we know M1 from our starting conditions, and then you just create rows with various values of M2. I started at some low value 0.1. You can go up to sonic conditions and then continue to 3.0 or 4.0, etc. And then you can see that for each known M1 and M2, we can calculate the pressure ratio from the Fano equation, temperature ratio from here, since we now know both M2 over M1 and P2 over P1, and then T2, H2, and S2. Then you can plot the Fano curve, in this case starting here at some subsonic value, going to Mach number 1, and then continuing on the supersonic branch. Note that this starting point here is for the shock, which goes from 1 to 2. But to generate the curve, we made it like this. You could also start at a supersonic flow and work your way this way. Either way, you can plot this blue curve, the Fano curve. Now let's discuss the Rayleigh equation and the Rayleigh curve. The Fano equation was derived by using conservation of mass and conservation of energy. The Rayleigh equation is similar, but it uses conservation of mass and the linear momentum equation, which is our equation 5, which I repeat here. And I note that we already used conservation of mass in deriving this equation. So Fano and Rayleigh are kind of complementary. We use two of our three equations, mass and energy, for the Fano equation without using the momentum equation but Rayleigh uses mass and momentum without using the energy equation. Now let's manipulate. P1 minus P2 is P2 over RT2 by the ideal gas law. And then V2 is M2A2, and that's squared. And we do the same thing with the term on the right side, where we've used the ideal gas law. And now use the equation for speed of sound here and here, and noting that this is squared we get P2 over RT2, M2 squared, gamma RT2, minus the same thing with subscripts 1. Notice now that the R's cancel and the temperatures cancel. So P1 minus P2 equal P2 gamma M2 squared minus P1 gamma M1 squared. Combining some terms and rearranging, we get this. Or finally, in terms of our desired pressure ratio across the shock, we get 1 plus gamma m1 squared over 1 plus gamma m2 squared. This is the Rayleigh equation, which I'll number equation 14. This is an alternate form of the pressure ratio across a shock. We can plot this in a similar way for the Fano equation, and thus generate the Rayleigh curve. In fact, in Excel, I just copied and pasted everything that I had from Fano, but used this equation for pressure ratio instead of the Fano equation. And I comment here, as I've already said, we did not use the energy equation to generate the Rayleigh equation. We used only mass and momentum. Let's now sketch the Rayleigh curve, again on a Molier diagram. The Rayleigh curve looks something like this, and a lot of the features are similar to the Fano curve. For example, M equal 1, or sonic, at the maximum entropy point. Again, as with Fano, the supersonic branch is on the bottom, and the subsonic branch is on the top. And we make a similar argument that if we start at some point 1 in the supersonic branch of this plot, and we have a shock, the shock will go from supersonic to subsonic, and hit somewhere up here on the subsonic branch. This is the shock, but the Rayleigh curve has many other points along here, and I'll give a formal definition. The Rayleigh curve represents the locus of all possible states that have the same mass flow, again per unit area. And so far this is identical to the Fano curve, but we differ here because now we say and satisfy not energy, but the linear momentum equation across the shock. This is the definition of the Rayleigh curve, and this locus of points that we plotted does not necessarily satisfy the energy equation, only the mass and momentum equations. But when we start with one, there's only one point on this curve that is valid as 
0.2 across the shock. And I also want to mention that in both the Fano curve and the Rayleigh curve, entropy across the shock must increase. So we go only in one direction here, from supersonic to subsonic, with an increase in entropy. S2 must be greater than S1. The same thing was true with Fano. Let's do a quick comparison of Fano and Rayleigh pressure ratios. We have air flowing through a CD nozzle, and a normal shock occurs where M1 is 2.60. Let's calculate and compare the pressure ratio, P2 over P1, across the shock using both Fano and Rayleigh. Here's my A and A, ideal gas air, with given gamma, steady, 1D, and isentropic before and after the shock. Since we don't know yet how to calculate M2, I'll use the compressible aerodynamics calculator online, where at gamma equal 1.40 and M1 equal 2.60, we can calculate the downstream Mach number M2. I'll show you this quickly. On the compressible aerodynamics calculator, we go to the normal shock relations, where gamma of 1.4 is the default, and we type in our Mach number 1, 2.6, and hit calculate. And we see that Mach number 2 is 0.50387, and P2 over P1 is 7.72000. Let's use this M2 in our Fano and Rayleigh equations. And if everything is OK, we should get this pressure ratio. First for Fano, I write out the pressure ratio equation. And when we plug in gamma M1 and M2 from here, we get 7.7200 which agrees with the compressible aerodynamics calculator. Let's repeat this for Rayleigh. P2 over P1 is 1 plus gamma M1 squared over 1 plus gamma M2 squared. And again, when you plug in the values for gamma M1 and M2, we get 7.72000, which again agrees. So we verified that both Rayleigh and Fano equations are satisfied across a normal shock. But how do we get this M2 without using the online calculator? Well, I'll show you a couple of ways to do this. One obvious way is to equate the Fano and Rayleigh equations. In other words, set P2 over P1 from the Fano equation to P2 over P1 from the Rayleigh equation. What this will do is satisfy all three equations, mass, momentum, and energy since Fano uses mass and energy, and Rayleigh uses mass and momentum. But by setting these equal to each other, we should be able to generate M2 across the shock. In other words, M2 is a function of M1 and gamma, which is what we ultimately want. So this is exactly what I'll do. I'll combine Fano and Rayleigh equations to calculate the downstream Mach number. First, I'll do it qualitatively or graphically. Let's plot the Fano curve and the Rayleigh curve on the same Molier diagram. Recalling that the bottom branch is the supersonic branch, we start at this intersection, which we'll call point 1, at S1 and H1. And where these two curves intersect on the subsonic portion is our point 2 across the shock. In other words, the shock satisfies both the Fano curve and the Rayleigh curve which is graphically where they intersect. Let me move this whole thing down a little bit because I want to illustrate that H0 is up here somewhere. And remember that H0 1 equal H0 2. And since H0 is H plus V squared over 2, this distance is V1 squared over 2. And this distance is V2 squared over 2, where H2 is here. There is one unique subsonic Mach number, M2, where Fano equal Rayleigh, and this is the M2 we desire to find. Notice that the shock must go from 1 to 2 in the direction of increasing entropy. You can't have a shock from 2 to 1, only from 1 to 2. Quantitatively, we simply equate P2 over P1 from the Fano equation, keeping my same coloring scheme, and the Rayleigh equation, and I'll call this equation 15. You can see from this equation that for a given m1 and gamma, we should be able to solve for m2. In other words, m2 is a function of m1 and gamma, which is what we want.
I have never seen this done in any textbook, so I took it upon myself. There's a couple pages of algebra, which I would advise you to reserve for a cold rainy night. I'll just outline what I did. I manipulated it to the form a m2 to the fourth plus b m2 squared plus c equals zero, where this is not the speed of sound but another variable, because you see that this is in the form of a quadratic rule, not for m2 but for m2 squared. So m2 squared is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Well, this has two roots. And it turns out that one is supersonic and one is subsonic. So we use the subsonic root, since for a shock, we go from supersonic to subsonic. After a couple pages of algebra, I get m2 squared equal negative capital B minus the square root of negative B plus 2A over 1 plus gamma B, which I'll call equation 16, which is our solution, where my grouping of terms for A is m1 squared 1 plus gamma minus 2 m1 squared over 1 plus gamma m1 squared squared and capital B is 2 gamma a minus 1. This is now m2 as a function of m1 and gamma as desired. Finally let's verify using the same Mach number that we did for our previous example 2.60 and for error where recall we had for both Rayleigh and Fano that P2 over P1 is 7.7200 and M2 is 0 0.50387 where I'm showing five significant digits. Let's plug into this equation 16 and I get M2 equal to 0 0.50387 which agrees with what we got from the online calculator. So I'm very happy. Once you have M2 you can use either Fano or Rayleigh to get the pressure ratio and also the temperature ratio and pretty much everything else you need across the shock. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.